Yo, what's up guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make a four foot by two foot by two foot plywood enclosure that would be perfect for a bearded dragon. And here's the best part. You only need to have basic carpentry skills. Oh wait, I lied, there's another best part. Home Depot will do the hardest cutting for you. All right, my name's Ryan. You're watching Mighty More from Reptiles. Let's go to Home Depot. Let's go to Home Depot and get our supplies. First up, you're gonna wanna get some birch plywood, half inch thick, four foot by eight foot. Then you're gonna to wanna to grab a one by three board. Then you're gonna need a one by four board as well. Then you have your guy at Home Depot cut your plywood straight into two by eight, which is directly in half. And then you have him cut it down directly in the middle to two by four. And then you have him grab the last piece and cut that into two, two by twos. Your two by twos will be for your side panels while the rest will be for your top, back and bottom. Then you're gonna to wanna to cut off one inch of both of your two by two foot pieces. Then I grabbed my top and back boards, and then since I didn't have any clamps, I decided to use masking tape to hold them still. And then I began drilling holes for all my screws. And then I screwed in my corners so I don't have to worry about it falling over. Then I repeated the exact same process for putting on my top side. Oh, and I just used inch and a half screws for building the box. Then once I got my box stabilized, I thoroughly secured it down with more screws. Then I flipped the box over on its back. Then I slid my side panels in and then I stabilized it with some screws. And then after I stabilized it, I just thoroughly secured it all down with screws and then rinsed and repeat for the other side. I then reinforced the rest of the box completely with screws. Now that we got the main structure of the box built, it's time to start constructing the front panels. And that's where those common boards are gonna come in. We're gonna be using the one by fours for the top and bottom and the one by threes for the sides. So I do wanna mention, it's kinda of weird with boards. When you buy them, they're never this actual width that they say they are at the stores. Like for instance, this one by four is, is actually only 3.5 inches wide. It seems like every board they say that it is, the width is, it's actually half an inch shorter. I know, it's kind of annoying. Then you're going to want to grab your 1x4 board and cut it directly in half into 4 feet. We'll be using these two pieces for the top and bottom of the front panels. Then I grab my 1 inch ruler, I measure 1 inch all the way across my top piece of my board that I'm going to be using, and the then I cut it off. And the reason why I'm cutting this off is so that my sliding doors will be able to fit in just right. Then I double check to make sure that my top and bottom boards fit nice and evenly with the box itself. And then I screw down the corners of the boards and then thoroughly screw down the rest of it. Then you grab your hard ruler and measure the gap in between on the sides. This is where you're going to put in your side panels of the 1x3 boards and this is going to stop your sliding doors from going out. And the gap measured out to 18.5 inches and then I cut two of those lengths off my 1x3 board. And then I nicely snug them in on the sides and then I thoroughly secured them down with screws. And then it was rinse and repeat for the other side. All right, let's begin working on the vents for the box. So I got two of these from Home Depot. They were cheap, they were like $3. They're 16 inches long and four inches tall. And I got this specifically because of the screen on the back. This will be nice for keeping the feeder insects inside and I don't have to worry about the reptiles getting stuck in between the vents. Then I carefully made measurements of the placement of the vents so it's nice and even. As well, I outlined the vents so I know where to cut it. Then I made measurements from the actual sides of the panels to where the actual vents are, so I know where to cut it precisely. Then I grabbed a half inch drill bit and drilled into every corner of my measurements. As this will allow my jigsaw blade fit in and have a starting point and then cut all the way along down the sides of the vent measurements. Then I repeated the exact same process to the other side of the box. Then 
Then I use GE silicone too to seal up all the edges on the corners of the sides. This takes a few hours to cure out, but we can still do other work then. We can start working on the slider tracks for the sliding doors and you want to grab your hard ruler and measure the gaps from the side panels. For me, it measured exactly at 43 inches across. So I grabbed the top and bottom pieces and I cut them to 43 inches each. And I chose this type of glue because it's nice and strong, it dries fast and quick, and when you apply the slider tracks, all you have to really do is just press it down nice and firm and then you don't have to use any weights to hold it down. So I was really happy with the results of this glue. All right, now let's begin sealing up the wood. I like to use something called Dry Lock Extreme. This product is latex based and it's used to waterproof a lot of concrete and masonry work. I actually use this in my dart frog cages all the time and it just works amazing. And what's great about Extreme is that it's already nice and white and there's no sandy grit texture to it. So basically I'll be able to use it as a two in one, seal it up and paint it. And if you don't like the color white, you can totally use liquid colors such as brown, black and terracotta. But I'm just going to be using white for this project. And in order for dry lock to work correctly, you need to do it at least in two coats. After you apply your first coat, you wait at least two hours and then you can do it again. You can definitely add more than two coats of dry lock. Personally, I did three for this enclosure. And I've seen it where people will do this correctly and they can even hold a pool of water into it. So that's pretty neat. Now it's time to start working on the electrical. I grab my half inch drill bit again, I drill a hole in the corner, and then I use my jigsaw to cut out a one inch square. And then I cut a power cord and spliced up the wires from an old heat lamp, and I'm gonna fish it right through that hole there. Then I'm gonna use a porcelain light socket that I got at Home Depot for like $1.80, and you wanna make sure that it's porcelain and not plastic as plastic could be a fire hazard. So definitely go with the porcelain. So with the stripped wire, you saw those screws on the back of the light socket. Well, you just wrap it around the screws and then screw it down on both sides. And then you got power and ground and your light socket will totally work from here. Then I use the pencil to make markings through the holes of the light socket. These markings will be for the placement of my screws. And then I drill in my screws just by a few threads. Then put my light sockets on the screw, lock it in, and then I screw it down tight. I then use half inch cable brackets to hold up my electrical wiring in the upper right hand corner. This will keep my wiring nice and secure and I don't have to worry about the, any animals hopping on and dragging them down. You're going to want to use half inch screws for this part because if you don't then it's going to pierce through the other side of the plywood and that would suck. For my UVB light fixture, I just put it in nice and straight. I then grab my pencil, mark two lines, and these markings will be for where I'm gonna screw in my mounting brackets for my light fixture. All right, let's get to the sliding doors now. And for my doors, I use acrylic sheet or also known as plexiglass. I get 18 inches tall by 24 inches long pieces. I get two of those and then I just pop them right in. And for my door handles, I just use rubber bumper stoppers. And I like these because they're nice and clear and they're discreet. I just press it on nice and firmly and I place them halfway up and a half inch away from the side panels. Yeah, we got sliding doors now, baby. And if you guys are getting value out of this, will you guys do me a favor and hit that like and subscribe button down below? And that's my tutorial video on how to make a DIY reptile enclosure. And if you guys got some value out of this, will you guys hit and smash that like and subscribe button down below. And if you guys are also interested in how I made this DIY reptile background, I'll leave a video link in the description down below. My name's Ryan and you're watching Mighty Morphin Reptiles. <laughs>